The first video this week was about trig integrals. Those are useful in and of themselves, but that was really only set up for the rest of the week. The main technique for this week is trig substitution. This is a special kind of substitution that uses trig functions in a surprising and clever way. This all starts with Pythagoras. a squared plus b squared equals c squared for the sides of a right triangle. Many ge geometry problems really do come down to a Pythagoras calculation. If I need to solve for any of a, b, or c, then I get expressions with square roots and either sums or differences under the square roots. The result of the ubiquity of Pythagoras in geometry problems means that these kind of square root terms are very common. In particular, they show up in many integrals. So I need to integrate functions that involve these square root expressions. There are three types. The difference where the variable is second, a is a constant and x is the variable, the difference where the variable is first, and the sum, which of course is symmetric. So how do I approach integrals with these square root terms? Well, I use trig functions, and I do this because trig functions can get rid of the square root. The square root is a problem for integration. I don't know how to integrate this kind of square root. If the square root is gone, then the integral will be fine. So let me start with the first type, the square root of a squared minus x squared. The substitution here will be based on the trig identity sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. This is the identity that will help get rid of the square root. The substitution is x equals a sine theta, so that dx is a cos theta d theta. If I use the substitution, what happens to the square root term? Well, I will replace x squared with a squared sine squared theta, and then I can factor a squared out and pull it out of the square root. I can always assume a squared is positive in these problems. Well, then 1 minus sine squared theta is cos squared theta using the trig identity I just mentioned. But the square root of cos squared cancels off, and I'm left with the absolute value of cosine. The absolute value here is pretty annoying, so I get a bit further and I restrict to the domain where cosine is positive. This again is always possible, since the restricted domain is enough to deal with the entire domain of the square root term in the original integral. This means that the square root gets replaced with a cos theta without the absolute value bars. And then the substitution has gotten rid of the square root with a trig identity. This is the main idea a trig identity to get rid of the square root. Let me go through the other two types quickly, since they each have a different trig substitution. For the sum, the square root of a squared plus x squared, the identity that I need is tan squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. I use x equals a tan theta with dx equals a secant squared theta d theta. So what happens to the square root here? Well, I replace x with a tan theta, and then factor out the a again. And then I use the identity to replace 1 plus tan squared theta with secant squared theta. And then I can cancel off the square root with a squared to give a times the absolute value of secant. And again, by restricting to the domain um, where secant is positive, I can drop the absolute value. Using this substitution, the square root is gone and has been turned into just a secant function. The last pattern is the difference, x squared minus a squared with the x squared first. I'm going to use the same trig identity with tangent and secant, but the substitution is now x equals a secant theta, with dx equals a tan theta secant theta d theta. Then I'll go through the same steps. In this case, the square root turns into the tangent and then disappears. These are the three cases. I haven't done any of the integrals yet, but this was just to explain the substitutions themselves and why they work. I'll get into examples in the next video.